Hi everyone, Shirtlad here. This is gonna be a much more ranty video, but it does pertain to the overall landscape of Gundam games, which ultimately led me to make it. I felt somewhat compelled to talk about anime-based games. They're a subsection of the game market, and they're known for their distinctive art styles, and a fairly mixed reputation in the eyes of a wider public. Generally, the first thing people think of when you mention them are either questionably balanced yet lovable 2D fighters, such as Sailor Moon S, or generic beat-em-ups like the plethora of licensed Musou installments and the rather poorly received Jump Force. Now, in terms of general perception, the wider landscape of Gundam games as a whole is seen in a very similar light. Even though most installments past the Game Boy era are either genuinely good or fulfill a specific niche. Admittedly, there are some games that are blatant shovelware, such as the Ice and She slot machine game for Wii, the two Mahjong reskins for Nintendo DS, and of course, a large majority of the Game Boy parts of the Gundam backlog. Those are fortunately a fraction of the lineup, and arguably, the Game Boy flops had paved the way for quality installments such as SD Gashapon Wars and MS Saga, also known as True Odyssey on the Japanese side. Thing is, there's a set of contributing factors which keeps this view alive and well. The most common factor is that at the end of the day, these games share the same turf with other licensed anime video. So people in the more normie circles see them as anime games first and foremost. Gundam, when it came to America, was huge, everybody loved it, and then they made video games, and most of them were pretty meh. But there's a couple that are really good. Attributing the general mixed reputation of the subgenre to Gundam games by proxy. Factor number two, at least in my opinion, is the Play-Doh's cave effect that internet content surrounding this matter generally produces. Here it is, Mobile Suit Gundam vs. Zeta Gundam, gargantuan robot hit everyone's been waiting for. I'm just kidding, this game sucks more bolt than RC on the weekend. Mobile Suit Gundam vs. Zeta Gundam is a romp through the world of professional robot cockfighting set in the beloved Gundam universe. A universe that's so beloved, Mobile Suit Gundam vs. Zeta Gundam doesn't feel the need to explain anything. Just about the only thing Mobile Suit Gundam vs. Zeta Gundam has going for it is the giant fighting robot. And even that isn't very good. It's insipid, repetitive, and not very challenging. Mobile Suit Gundam vs. Zeta Gundam, Gundam's a two. Out of five. What the f am I looking at? Looks like our lucky day. You'd be due for some luck after ending up in this god awful game. Mobile Suit Gundam Crossfire gets a one out of five for being shovelware of the highest order. And if you buy it, you're part of the problem. There's people whose only exposure to Gundam games are just top 10 lists and AVGN-style reviews by people who fashion themselves as a self-proclaimed authority on these games. You know, Zionic Front, I think, was an interesting side story, but it wasn't a very good game. <laughs> you serious? Nuance and exceptions do apply, but such an influence is hard to deny. Aside from the skewed lens such a content provides, a lot of these channels often stick to the quote-unquote safe and iconic picks, most of which being the same 15-ish games on PS2, 3 and 4, further rubbing the salt into the wound by calling them the only good ones, the few ones that aren't trash and other such nonsense. But if there's one thing that's been consistent about Gundam games, it's that you're setting yourself up for disappointment when you buy one. Stay away from Hot Scramble. You're not gonna enjoy it. Stop it. Get some help. I'm not saying you shouldn't enjoy such content, but at the same time you shouldn't use it as a substitute for looking stuff up yourself. Hell, I'm not gonna pretend that I'm any sort of an authority on the topic either. I'm just some internet artist that really likes to lay about old Gundam games. Nothing more, nothing less. The third contributing factor is the fact that a lot of Gundam games are heavily geared towards specific niches, both in terms of mecha and game genres themselves. In a lot of ways, I'd argue that a lot of these entries often only share the Vfin wearing machine. Simply put, if you show somebody who likes shooters a game like War for Earth or Formula Senki 0122, they likely won't have a good time. If it's their only exposure to the subgenre, their outlook on Gundam games will become more jaded than a Game Boy channel that had to play and cover SD Gundam Lacroix Wars. Lacroix Heroes, on the other hand, is just a lackluster paint by numbers Dragon Quest clone, cynically designed from top to bottom. As for blame, we can direct that primarily at Bandai and Sunrise, who created this soulless exercise in exploiting children's love of Dragon Quest and giant robots in the least admirable way imaginable. There are Gundam games that are decent, which I personally dislike. For example, 
I didn't like the first Gundam vs Gundam for a PSP, since the mobile suit feels super awkward to play, especially when compared to Next Plus or Rango vs F2. I personally didn't enjoy the gunplay of Gundam Evolution, since the shots and impacts felt sterile. Both of these two examples are widely enjoyed, but they just don't do it for me. Different strokes for different folks and all. Fortunately, the amount of Gundam video somewhat assures that most people are able to find something that tickles their fancy. You can easily find anything from grid strategies and arcade shoot-em-ups to kart racers and janky FMV games. All you have to do is to look around a little. Besides, most of these games are full-on abandonware. Another part of it is admittedly laziness. Convenience has become heavily prioritized in recent years. With the exception of well-known games, people don't emulate as much and they usually keep to their console of choice, heavily cutting down on the amount of Gundam games they ever interact with. This is another thing that can be rectified by going out of your comfort zone, but it's still a big ask, especially when a lot of such games are JP only, and as such often lack an English interface. Nonetheless, a large chunk of them have a fairly foolproof menu system. So, that's my take on why people keep sleeping on Gundam games and how to rectify such a problem, or at least mitigate it. This was somewhat spurred on by me hearing people parrot the aren't all Gundam games just musos and cash grabs thing, hearing people wish for games that already exist, and especially seeing one guy trying to get a somewhat similar point across and fumbling it spectacularly. I'm not feeling petty enough to name any names, besides if I did, this rant would become quite dated over time. Which would be a shame given that this issue will likely persist. I don't usually make videos of this format and likely won't do so on a consistent basis, but I felt like I should make this one. Anyways, that's my two cents on it. Feel free to voice your thoughts in the comments. In fact, I encourage it, since I'm genuinely curious about what you guys think. Anyways, with that, this is Shirtlad, signing out.